good. JP Morgan was great. A billion <clears throat> revenue beat. Cost in line, and they're lowering cost guidance going forward. Valuation attractive. United Healthcare beat and raise and medical loss ratio, which everybody was freaked about. They all thought costs were going higher. No, in line. J&J &J raising organic growth to 5%. This is a mammoth company. I actually bought more J&J &J today because I, didn't, I don't think it's up enough. And again, also a very attractive valuation. You bought more J&J. &J. Joe, you bought more JP Morgan. Oh, absolutely. Earnings are great or are they let's talk great financials. versus terrible expectations? No, let's mm -hmm. talk financials for a second. Let's talk about JP Morgan, 8% revenue growth, all-time high in this stock. You're talking about a sector that is going to have flat revenue growth. We talked before. What did we want to see? We want to see expansion in lending. You got that on the card business. You got that in auto lending. You got that in home lending. This is a phenomenal quarter from J.P. Diamond. Now let's look at the others. Citigroup reversed its earlier losses. Why? CFO gets on the call and tells you revenue is going to grow faster than expenses. Wells Fargo, same thing. They reverse earlier losses. Why? Because they threw in the kitchen sink ahead of a new CEO. They took a $1.6 billion litigation cost. I think How about for that earnings, efficiency ratio? It's 69%. It's phenomenal. Their goal is 60%. So they threw the kitchen sink Let, in on that, too. Well, let's, here's, let's not talk about the, the U.S.-China trade to, truce. Let's talk about this. And then, Scott, let's talk about the yield curve. Okay, let's talk about everyone freaked out over a three-month to 10-year. Three-month to 10-year was negative 55 basis points on August 29th. You know what it is today? It's plus seven basis points. 175 on the 10-year. On the but, but Bernstein says... If reported earnings come in according to expectations, this quarter will be the first negative growth quarter since the second quarter of 16. In, in total, you're talking about the you stock guys market are going up to rage. energy. Yeah. So, After expectations were taken well, down to the floor. Well, look, it should not be a surprise to anyone that we're going to possibly have, possibly, because remember, these estimates always start out negative. Q1 and Q2 started out hard negative, and at the end, they became positive. So analysts always get a little more pessimistic going into a quarter than reality is. However, having said that, Scott, I think this is likely to be a slightly negative quarter. So what? don't care, all right? Everybody's looking to 2020, and if you're looking at 2020, it comes down to whether trade tensions ease and companies can get back on their feet, start spending again, keep the labor market strong, the consumer hangs in there, and 2020 should be fine. Hey, let's, let's uh, put another number on this, okay? Annual earnings for this year, 2019, are looking to be basically flat to next year. Nobody was looking for that a year ago, okay? So that is a major change that explains in part why the stock market has been back and forth and back and forth and ultimately nowhere this year. But it will start going higher if we actually do get earnings growth in 2020. This third quarter, I don't care about. The most outstanding earnings report today is from who, Doc? Well, it was J.P. Morgan. Um, of all the companies that reported? Of all the companies that reported because they virtually checked every box. Uh, and I'm a person who does not own it. Uh, but I was just looking at it and uh, discussed with Steph Fick. Uh, fixed income and currency trading. I mean, these guys crushed it across that's, that's the board. That's probably where the upside surprise really was. Yes, sir. Yep. And uh, tangible uh, 18 times. I mean, everything that J.P. Morgan had in this report, including the delivery of the information via the conference call, all of that was strong, Scott. Um, and for a change, we're not talking about China. We're not talking about impeachment or any of the other political things. But we do have very positive news about a potential deal overseas. That would be the Brexit uh, negotiations that are going on between UK and uh, the European Union. And those look pretty positive. That's not a signed done deal yet. But the more we move towards that, the less scary Halloween will be. And the better chance is that we continue on this pace, perhaps not this one day pace today, but over the past week, we've seen a lot of good. Hey.